Hi, welcome to Movie Review with Daniel. And today I'll be doing a movie review on Wonder Woman 1984. Wonder Woman 1984 is a 2020 American superhero film based on the DC Comics character Wonder Woman. The movie was released on the 25th of December in the United States and is a sequel to the 2017's Wonder Woman and the ninth installment in the DC Extended Universe. The film is directed by Patty Jenkins from a script she wrote with Jeff Jones and David Clam, based on a story by Jones and Jenkins. Beware, this movie review contains criticism and spoilers. The opening scene of Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman 1984 is a lesson. Short cause to greatness, cheating, at the expense of others. We get you nowhere. It's a loose loose, which is solid enough for Diana. Prince, the child, in this moment, still living on the woman run archipelago of Themyscira, to learn before she becomes our goddess and savior, Wonder Woman. But look at the way she learns it. She gets a little cocky during the competition, gets knocked off her horse, and finds a clever way to get back into the game. You might expect the prevailing lesson to be one extolling the values of quick thinking and using your wits. Instead, she is reprimanded. Get ahead using the straight path, the right path, the other path, or morally, you will always be behind. The evil that eventually crops up in Wonder Woman 84 makes the value of this lesson a bit clear when applied to other people. But what's the hard route for a demigod really? The odds are always in their favor. Make them immune, sure otherwise the rest of us are Toast, but why reign in their creativity, their wit? In fact, why reign Wonder Woman in at all? Wonder Woman 1984 is, in so many ways, a more ambitious, expansive movie than its predecessor, tackling more in the way of dramatic chaos, big feelings, and convoluted archaeological villain. But Diana, princess herself, as resumed by Gal. Gargot feels a little less complicated. A personality even more razor focused, more straightforwardly virtuous than before. It makes all the excitement that arises in the movies button. Busting to an half hour runtime feels somehow narrow. Too. Even as the premises expand, a cost ancient object, a mega lomenic named Max Lord, an insecure and oft harassed geologist, Barbara. Mineral, a fun blast from the past. There, how the movie expands, and at the same moment, the Anna herself seems to contract. Let's keep the plot specific for now. One of my nights before is a better, mid, and more interesting movie than its predecessor, in the way that the superhero sequel ought to be. Now that we've gotten the origin out of the way, let's get to business. You know, the climatic fight is coming. The first movie is remaining an endearing but inarguable mess as an action scene featuring David to will is probably hot. You know there will be other fights along the way to keep the audience as his glued in case. Jackson's Wonder Woman movies feel more interested in the lead to grace news of Diana's personality. The trouble with the new movie that it suffers for having fewer of them, or rather few new ones. The action in this, the actions in this movie has more clear appeal. But Jackson's interest in Wonder Woman. The woman has always felt more essential. The fight, for example, are less memorable for the particulars of combat, a long standing superhero movie problem, than for Gargoyle's truly enviable ability to live up to the heightened iconography. The year mirror ethos of it all, looking good during a fight, is the kind of thing only a star can do, really. We will probably always associate this franchise with that slow motion battle which are through the wreckage of World War which gets a call back in the latest movie. The image works well enough that even the ideously go but still somehow catch it in music can totally do the away. It is the solid goofy action movie stuff that makes the superiorism of this movie good when it's good. Even the burden of representation can weigh that stuff down. It all gives off the impression that this is a woman who knows that all eyes are on her, that these battles aren't just plot points or excuses to blow things up or beat Guys, of a rather a chance of flex, Gardot's genuine star quality that all kind of collapsed in the model of the first movie's climax. But nothing in that movie's early third act fight is 
as memorable as Diana eating ice cream for the first time or seeing a man for the first time. The sequel has less of that for better was the stories already got him most of that out of the way. Romantic subplots which I won't spoil, not to withstand it. If anything, Wonder Woman is the first standard for how slow everyone is to realize the true nature of the villainy they are facing. That is the double edged promise of the monkey's paws at the movie's center. It's a meteor movie in that way. There's more to grab hold of worthwhile and not. The Wonder Woman envisioned by Jenkins and Gadot is, of course, intent on saving the world.